Good evening, and welcome to Bunker Hill Baptist Church and our Sunday night service. From wherever you're joining us from, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, Columbia, Marion County, or all around the world, thank you for tuning in this evening, and we hope you enjoy your worship service tonight with us here at Bunker Hill Baptist Church. Well, tonight, I really don't have that many big announcements to go over. Uh, the church council will meet next Sunday on the 23rd and discuss our future plans for Labor Day and the month of September. So continue to pray for our, our church council. Continue to pray for our deacons. They are set, uh, starting up their family ministry. Basically, they're going to have one deacon per family of the church that's going to check in with the families and help out and pray for and just be there for a, a lot of communication. Anything that family needs, there will be a deacon for your family here at Bunker Hill Baptist Church. The details on that will be coming soon as to officially when they start and everything will be going on. But that's something to get excited about here at Bunker Hill Baptist Church. As we turn, turn our attention to our prayer requests, we want to lift up Mr. Fred Herring and his family as they continue with the cancer treatments. We want to lift up all those that are going to school, going back to school on Monday, all the teachers and administration, anyone involved with that. This is a hard time, but a necessary time to continue on with the education. So continue to pray for those that are all being affected Continue to pray for those families and those students in our church family, in our community, in our world. As we're dealing with this situation, we know, although we don't know what's going to happen today or tomorrow, we know who created us. We know who created this world, and we know who knows tomorrow. So we put our hope and our faith and our trust in our Heavenly Father. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we gather tonight for our time in your word, God, I pray that uh, tonight's message would just be convicting, not only to me, Lord God, but to anyone listening tonight. Thank you for those that have tuned in. I pray especially for anyone watching this, God, that you would just bless them throughout their week, Lord God, just for tuning in. Bless them and their family. God, we lift up all the families, Lord God, right now that are involved with uh, education, sending their uh, students back to school, uh, their kids back to kindergarten, wherever they're going, Lord God. We know that there are heavy decisions being made by administration and teachers and all personnel, Lord God. But we all know it is ultimately in your hands. We just pray that they would submit themselves to their will, continue to uplift your gospel and your love to those students, Lord God. And I pray that we as a church family continue to do that. We lift up Mr. Fred and anyone dealing with sickness, Lord God. I pray that he knows that there is a God that loves him and a church family that is praying for him. And that I pray that we as a church family this week, as we go throughout our community, in our world, we would show the love of Christ wherever it is that we go. May we be your representative. May you say about us what you said about your servant, Job. Consider my servant, Job. I pray that we would be convicted in that same way, that you would brag about what we do for you this week. We would, that you would brag about us and how we serve you and that you would show us as an example. May we be convicted about that. May we show your love, show your passion, show your gospel to this world. In your name we pray, amen. Well, tonight, if you have your copy of God's Word, I would invite you to turn with me to Ezekiel chapter one. Ezekiel chapter 1. Now, you may be wondering why Ezekiel at such a time as this and when, when everything is going on. I've heard a lot of people talk about and wonder about the end times. And I've heard people want to read the book of Revelation, the book of Isaiah. And they point to things Jesus said, and they wonder now, does this event mean it's the end times? Does this thing mean it's the end times? But I think of all the prophets, that's hardest to understand when it comes to prophecy and the things that he wrote about. It's Ezekiel. You can look throughout commentaries 
and people will have different opinions about what he said and what this means and everything going on. In fact, Charles Spurgeon once said that Ezekiel has much more to tell us than we'll ever know. But the problem is, I don't understand a lot of what he said. And this is Charles Spurgeon, one of the greatest theologians of our time, briefly discussing how much problems he had in reading and trying to understand the book of Ezekiel. And so I think it's important. And so this message is to anyone that has been doing their due diligence to read the book of Revelation, to study up on end times. There is something vastly important that I want us to understand just there in chapter one, when it comes to understanding God and the end times. Because there's a scene there in Ezekiel where God shows up on a thundercloud and it opens up and you see the heavens before you. And we're going to get to that. But one thing we need to keep in mind, when we study the end times, prophecies, anything, we need to know that our God has a mystery about him. There are things that we do not totally understand about what he does. There are things of this earth. There are things they're still finding on the bottom of the ocean floor, even in archeology, span things they're digging up, just things within a jungle, new theories, new possibilities that scientists are always discovering and talking about, but there's new things they're discovering about this world. So how much more do we not or cannot grasp about our creator if we're still trying to grasp and understand his creation. And I think that's important to all believers, especially believers that have been going to church for such a time, we can tend to stall out a bit. We can tend to say, yeah, I've, I've heard that. I've heard it all before. I, I heard that last week. I heard that a year ago. I heard that message before. And we can get to where we, we feel like we figure church out, or we figure the Bible out, so we figure God out. And we don't have that respect of who God is. And so Ezekiel shows us that what is most important is that we need to have that fear and understanding of God as we listen to what he says. So there, turn to Ezekiel chapter 1. There, in, uh, starting in verse 1, and I'm going to read some selected passages there from chapter 1. In the thirteenth year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, while I was in exiles against the Shabar Canal, the heavens opened and I saw a vision of God. On the fifth day of the month, it was the fifth year of the King, King Jehoiakim exile, the word of the Lord came directly to Ezekiel the priest, the son of Uzim, in the land of the Chaldeans in the Shabar Canal, and the Lord's hand was on him there. I looked and there was a whirlwind coming from the north, a great cloud flashing back and forth with bright light all around it. In the center of the fire, there was a gleam like amber and the form of four living creatures came from it. And this was their appearance. They had human form, but each had four faces and four wings. Their legs were straight, their soles of their feet were like the hooves of the calves, sparkling like the gleam of polished bronze. They had human hands under their wings and their sides and all four had faces and wings. Their wings were touching. The creatures did not turn as they moved. They went straight ahead and the form of each of their faces was that of a man and each of their four of the face had a lion on the right, the face of an ox on the left, the fox of an eagle. And this is what their faces were like. Their wings were spread upward. Each had two wings touching that another two wings covered its body. Each creature went straight ahead. Where the spirit wanted to go, they went without turning as they moved. And if you drop down there in verse 27, from what seemed to be his waist up, I saw a gleam like amber with what the fire enclosing all around it. From what it seemed was to be waist down, I saw what looked like fire. There was a brilliant light from them all. The appearance of the brilliant light all around them was the rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day. And that was the appearance of the form of the Lord's glory. When I saw it, I fell on my face and heard a voice 
speaking. We're going to get to more of Ezekiel later in the next coming weeks, but we're going to stop there for tonight. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of this word. Now as we uh, discuss what your word would have to tell us, Lord God, we just pray that we would be open to receive. In your name we pray. Amen. As I'm giving this sermon right now, this is pre-recorded on a Friday night, on a Friday afternoon, uh, there's some thunder outside. And sometimes it thunders pretty hard. If you live around the Columbia area this week, earlier this week, we had a rainstorm that came in about two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. And if you're a light sleeper, even if you're not, you got woken up about that time. And there was some lightning that flashed and some mighty thunder. And it's amazing that nature kind of reminds us how small that we are, sometimes how out of control that we can be. We can hide in our houses, we can hide in our sheds, we can hide from the nature. But when it comes, we have to have respect for what it can do. Even more so, here was Ezekiel. And a cloud of thunder like came and the light flashed. And just like if you were here uh, in Columbia earlier this week, you saw light flash. It got your attention. And here was God going to speak to Ezekiel, tell Ezekiel what he was going to do. But first came the appearance, the glory of God as it came in from these clouds. And then we see that there's these creatures that sit around the throne. And even then, the lights can go off and on, even here in the sanctuary. You never know what's going to happen. But when something gets your attention, we can have these artificial lights that blink off and on. Maybe the electricity or the lightning around that struck it. And we don't know. But when God shows up, just like when our comfort is turned off, when God shows up, He commands our respect and our fear. And when we see God, you see what Ezekiel did the moment before God spoke to him. What did Ezekiel do? He fell down. I fear sometimes that when people talk about how they have felt the Spirit, when they knew God was speaking to them, there is not this moment of fear. There's not this moment of conviction that when Christ speaks to me, when this holy God speaks to the unholy me at this time, and I have to receive these words, that there's not a conviction about who I am in relation to to God. Understand when God speaks to you, just like the thunder that rolls outside or the lights that can go off and on here when the lightning flashes, it may be in a whisper, it may be in a loud voice, a booming thunderstorm, but when God speaks, you are humbled. You are put in your place, which is a servant to him. And we need to remember that earlier I said this sermon, this discussion is about those that are studying up on their end times and what that means. And we need to know that whether it's the book of Ezekiel, whether it's the book of Matthew, whether it's the book of Revelation, this is God's story. And we are a part of God's story. And we are not the center of his universe. He loves us and cares for us. But this is his story. And those are going to be his end times. Those are his plans. We don't need to say we live in it now and we have. People have always, always, from the time Jesus left, wondered, is this the end times? Is this when it's finally going to happen? There was actually a book written in 1980 in 1988 called 88 Reasons the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come back in 1988. Well, Jesus didn't come back in 1988. So what did the author do? You can look this up and Google this. 
89 reasons why Jesus Christ will come back in 1989. And the same author wrote another book about how he was coming back sometime in 2000. People are always interested in when that's going to happen. But it's almost like they're trying to be rescued from. They're worried about death. They're worried about what's going to happen. But we need to know that the God that can control the thunder and the storms and that has those around him, even beasts like these creatures here, is going to take care of us. And although we don't understand what's going to happen, we know if he can control the thunder and the rain and that nothing happens without his say, we know he's going to take care of us. And so we don't have to read the end times or read these prophecies in fear. Because this is God's story, the one who's in control of it all. So we don't need to worry where we are in relation to the end times. We are his. And that's what we need to be focused on. The last thing I want to discuss with you tonight. Brother Randy talks about the Shekinah glory of Christ that came down to the children of Israel on Mount Sinai. And the Old Testament is full of these times of the glory of God. In fact, this time in Ezekiel represents another time, or much like another time with Jeremiah when he saw the glory of God. And like I said, when you come in contact with the glory of God, when you see even a glimpse of it, you do exactly what Ezekiel said. Isaiah fell on his face the same way. You are humbled by what you see and what God can do. You see the glory, they see the glory of God in these clouds and this light. But I want to challenge each believer that is listening to this tonight. Turn, if you would, to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, and just starting there in verse 18. For I consider the sufferings of this present time that are not worth comparing for the glory that is going to be revealed to us. And if you read about, and you continue to read there in verse 18, you can read all the way to one of the most famous verses in verse 28, when he talks about, we know all the good things that work together for the good of those who love God that are according that are called according to his, his purpose. But notice before 28, before the most quoted verses in the Bible, besides John 3 16, you start at verse 18. And it talks about how you have to go through this suffering. You have to go through this time. But we look forward to the glory of God. We look this creation looks forward to the coming of Christ coming back to restore all. It says that the glory of God is going to be revealed to us when our sins are lifted. There are great glories of Christ coming. And I was saying a while ago, the book of Ezekiel is hard to understand. People have different versions of what those creatures mean. But ultimately means that God surrounds his throne with the greatest of his creation. Of these creatures that are strong as an ox, that fly like an eagle, that have wings, that look like the human face and are strong like the lion. What people, the readers back then would have said to be of God's greatest creations. But here's the thing I want to take away for believers. Around the throne time and time again. You see in the book of Revelation that there are believers surrounding the throne. One day there will be a day when we surround the throne of Christ. Right now we are surrounded in our reign, in our COVID, in whatever happens is to us. And we are suffering, it feels like. 
But there in verse 18, he says, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing for the glory that is going to be revealed. There's going to be more. We will suffer. Maybe it's eight years. Maybe it's 80 years. Whatever it is. But there is an eternity we are going to be with God. And we will praise his name. And we won't even have to look back at our present sufferings. Because throughout eternity we will be surrounded with God's glory. The same glory that shook fear into Ezekiel, the same glory that shook fear into the enemies of God, we will be surrounded in joy at that glory. I know it's scary. I know with kids going back and numbers being released all the time, we don't know what's going to happen week to week. And we don't know about this COVID disease. But I know Jesus Christ. And I know my eternal hope. And I'm not going to let fear or doubt. I'm not going to suffer in tomorrow's anguish. I'm going to rejoice today. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. God, we thank you for Ezekiel. And we thank you that he was just willing, Lord God, and prepared to learn. We thank you for your glory, Lord God, that we have not even tasted a glimpse of it. We can stand under the stars at night. We can enjoy a warm and sunny day. We can stand on the side of the mountains and see the greatness of this creation. But we have no idea what's in store when we finally get to rejoice at your throne. I know times are tough, Lord God. But we need to consider that although this present suffering is a lot for us, it is nothing to what's coming ahead of us. Suffering is a part of the Christian faith. But so is joy, peace, hope, and love. God, we thank you for that and our relationship with you. In your name we pray. Amen.